here we would get started. So if you all are here, um, you are, you I'm sure have heard me talk about Beauty Counter on Instagram or blog about it. Um, and I really appreciate you showing interest. And um, anyway, today should be fun. So uh, a couple things about Beauty Counter. The mission of Beauty Counter is uh, to get safer products into the hands of everyone. It's a clean beauty, skincare, makeup, uh, bath products, um, baby products. I use all of it. And I, the reason I started using beauty counter was because I have been either pregnant or breastfeeding for over five years straight. <laughs> and when I was nursing Caroline, I realized that I, um, I had this really bad melasma. And if, if any of you guys have had children, you, um, are probably familiar it's the skin discoloration that you can sometimes get it's just hyperpigmentation and so i had it i had this like melasma mustache that would not go away but and i needed something that would help address that but it was that was also safe um, that i could do while breastfeeding and so that was when i was introduced and uh, introduced to beauty counter and um i have not looked back i've slowly like pieced everything in um, as I've run out of products and, and, uh, so now I, I use it pretty much exclusively when it comes to makeup and skincare. Um, and what I, what I love about beauty counter is that it, yes, it's clean, but it's also incredibly high performing because if it wasn't high performing, I honestly would not use it. Um, just because I like things that work. Um, and I'm, I'm sure you all are the same way. You know, it's not, it's not gonna be worth the money if it's just clean. To me, it's gotta work. And so that is the beauty of Beauty Counter. Um, so uh, another thing about Beauty Counter is that they are big into advocacy. So um, the founder, Greg Renfrew, she actually um, testified before Congress earlier this year. Um, and the, the goal is to help the entire beauty industry be a bit more regulated just because there has no there has not been a major federal law regulating personal care personal care products since 1938 and just think about how much the world has changed since then um and you know what all we know now and so you just i don't know you never know what's in your your stuff if it's not being um screened thoroughly so beauty counter has a huge never list it's 1800 ingredients that are either harmful or potentially harmful, even just potentially, they've, they've banned it. And so I really like that it's taken all the guesswork out of everything for me. So I, I know that if I'm pregnant or if I'm nursing or if I, you know, have an immune system that's a bit compromised or if I have an allergy, you know, you, you know what's in your product. They've listed every single thing, even the things that are in part of the, the fragrance. Um, so today we are here, like I could wax poetic about all of the skincare stuff because I love the skincare and that was what made me kind of make the big switch. But we, today we're here to talk about Fall Listen 5 and we have Patricia here from the New York City store. Um, Beauty Counter has two locations, two physical locations. So there's one in New York City and one in Denver, is that? Yeah, mm -hmm. Denver. Um, and so they, because of COVID-19, they have made, the stores have made the makeup artists available for online events like this. So I'm really excited that Patricia's here to help because I share my stuff on Instagram and I'm sure I will learn plenty and probably change my routine a little bit now that I'm gonna see how Patricia does it and how the pros recommend doing it. Um, so we'll, Patricia, do you wanna introduce yourself and then dive in? Yeah, so my name is Patricia. I am from New York. I'm from the New York store. Um, I've been with Beauty Counter for over, a little over two years now. I love it. It's my little baby. <laughs> um, I'm very proud to be a part of a company that's leading a movement, um, especially in the beauty um, and skincare world. A lot of things are questionable outside of Beauty Counter. And Beauty Counter, like you said, just takes the guesswork out of everything. So you're going into the store going online and you're knowing that everything that you're purchasing is good for you um and and better for you too um but today we're going to talk about um one of my favorite things which is flawless in five 
And it's six high performing products that would kind of give you the best, most natural, flawless look um, in under five, five minutes or less. Uh, it's going to take a little bit longer today since I'm explaining um, a few steps, but hopefully you can follow along and just kind of learn a new um, tricks and discover beauty counter in a different way. Yeah, it really <laughs> is that fast. I, I, I did an IGTV video a couple days ago where mm -hmm. I applied it and I, I timed how long it took and it took me even with my children like running around me it was three minutes and 40 seconds oh so my god it really is that at least i mean for me um <laughs> as, as i've done it was like four minutes so <laughs> right now i'm a little bit slower because i'm going step by step i notice that as i'm doing it on myself right on myself so it's <laughs> a bit longer but yeah you could definitely do it under five minutes for sure yes yes yeah. especially if you're a bit busy mom <laughs> <laughs> It's that easy. <laughs> but um, let me just, just jump right through it. So you will get six products. You can pick out six different products throughout the policy five, and they're all customizable. Um, if you are struggling to choose your products, if you go online, there's a step-by-step. -step. Um, you can kind of go through skin tones, uh, whereas there's fair, light, medium, dark, and also tan too. Um, and it will kind of choose your products as you go and it will make suggestions. So if you're unsure what blush to choose, it will kind of give you a little suggestion. It's like, hey, um, I see that you're wearing linen. Mullen will be your blush color. And then we'll choose like your, your brow color um, and also lip gloss too. Um, but that's a helpful way to kind of use it online. Uh, so let's get started. So for complexion, there's two items as foundation bases. It, first one will be your Dew Skin. This is more of a um, tinted moisturizer with SPF. Very sheer coverage, but it's buildable, it's super hydrating. It also has um, sodium hyaluronic, which is great for hydration and plumpness in the skin. So if you're looking for something that will keep you hydrated throughout the day, but also protect your skin from sun rays, this is a great one to use. And it's also tinted. It comes in five different shades, um, one through five. Uh, if you're using tint skin and you're using the lighter shades, you can go ahead and do either like one or two. They're super forgiving in colors. And if you're more tan, three will be your shade. If you're a little bit deeper, four will be your shades. Four and five will be your shades. And then the next product is the tint skin. Tint skin comes in 10 shades. This is more like a sheer medium to full coverage. It's super buildable. It also has sodium um, hyaluronic inside there. Sodium hyaluronic helps boost hydration and gives you that firmness, that plump. My favorite, what I like to do is kind of mix these two together uh, just to get the sun protection and then um, coverage from the tin skin. But today I'm gonna to show you how to use the tin skin. What I like to use for it too is this cute little retractable brush. It has dual fibers, so you can use it for the face. You can also use it for blush if you're traveling. You can use it for powders too. It's just, it applies it on very effortlessly and super, super, um, it almost looks airbrushed when you apply it on too. I'm just gonna do a little bit on my hand. I'm gonna take my retractable brush. I like to apply it onto my hand first, just so I could warm it up a bit. And then I just kind of cover my brush. I start off with my cheeks and I kind of just dab it on first. And this helps give me a little extra coverage when you're dabbing and patting into the skin. And then I, once I just hit like the jaw area, I just blend it out and do more circular motions. I'm going to grab just a little bit more and I'm tapping on first just to give a little extra coverage and then I'm buffing onto the skin. So you want to do more of a circular uh, movement when you're applying the foundation to ensure that you're hitting everything up. Um, I like to warm it up just because it oxidizes a little bit faster. So oxidizing is um, when foundations are made out of minerals typically. So once you apply it to the skin and it hits oxygen, it tends to change in color a little bit. So I just like to warm it up so I could get that true tone first. And then I apply it onto my skin. 
So there's no surprises as the days goes on. I know this is my shade as if I'm warming it up on my hand. So Patricia, I have a question. Um, yeah. So I tend, we, so we just moved back from Hawaii. So it, we were living in like endless summer. And so most of the time I would wear dew skin because it has the SPF 20. Um, but I know that I probably should be wearing more sunscreen. So what, how okay. do you, what do you recommend putting on your face before? Cause I have the, the, the regular sunscreen. I just ordered the stick, which I've heard is really good. And so that should be here tomorrow. And so I'm just wondering like for sun protection, how do you recommend working that in? So what I do, um, what I, I apply the stick first after I do my whole skincare process. So I just take the stick, I kind of do it all over my face. I massage it in also, let that settle in for a little bit. And that can almost act as a primer too, just because of the slickness of it. It helps kind of hold your foundation a little bit longer. So you can do the SPF of 30, which is the stick, the, that's what it comes inside the stick. And that will actually work more than the SPF in the dew skin. So the higher the SPF, that's the one that's gonna work the most. So I like to do, a little bit of sunscreen underneath. Okay, great. And then it doesn't feel greasy at all if you do that? No, not at all. It definitely wait a little bit before applying your dew skin. Dew skin is very um, emollient. So if you're doing that on top of your sunscreen, even if you're doing um, like the, the lotions, mm -hmm. you still want to wait at least five minutes for your skin to absorb a little bit of it and then go ahead and do your dew skin on top. Same okay. thing with the skin too. You can do the tint skin over any of the sunscreens also. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. So the next step is the concealers. I actually use two concealers um, just because I have a little bit of um, pigmentation over in my eyes and dark circles. So I use one that's a little bit deeper just to counteract any blue undertones on my eyes. And then I use a lighter one just to help kind of brighten up a little bit. Um, they come like this, like in a little pen form. You want to click it a few times before you use it. And it just pumps out just like that. Uh, I'm gonna put a little bit of my hand, same situation. I like to warm it up. I like to warm everything up um, before I apply it on, just in case, like I said, if the color changes, I know what shade I'm putting on and there's no surprises throughout the day. I'm just taking a little blender brush to apply. You can also use your fingers. If you're applying it directly from the container, you wanna apply it into the inner corner first draw a line underneath your um, lash line, and then draw at least like two to three lines across, and that helps kind of brighten and lift up a little bit. If you find that your lids are a little bit darker, feel free to put a little bit there too, and that can also, if you're applying shadows, that can also act as your primer too. But I'm gonna start off a little bit with this darker shade. This is just an extra step I do. Necessarily, you don't have to do this. You're, you're okay to do just one concealer. But since I have a little bit of darkness, this is going to help kind of rack a little bit. And I'm just going to use a brush. And I'm applying it right from the inner corner. I'm going across my eyes right underneath my lash line. And then I'm just blending out. And I'm blending it out this way, just so I could cover a little bit more on my cheeks too. And then I'm going up to my lid. I have a little bit of pigmentation on my lids. So this helps give me coverage. Feel free to use your fingers too. If you're using your fingers, use your ring finger. It has the lightest touch. And I would just tap it in as opposed to pulling. You don't want any wrinkles, you don't want to pull. So you just want to tap, tap, tap it into the lines. If you have a sponge, you can use that too. You would do the same motion. You would kind of just bounce that sponge. I'm gonna go in my deeper shade and I'm gonna mix it with my lighter shade. I'm going right in here. Across. And up to my lid. Now, if you have a mattifying powder, um, a translucent powder. We sell mattifying powder that's great. I suggest to do a little bit over the lid and a little bit under eye just to protect it, keep it in place and prevent any creasing throughout the day. So as soon as you apply your concealer, 
let that settle in for a little bit, give it a few seconds, and then go ahead and dust a little bit of powder on top. I have a little bit on my brush already. I'm just gonna do a tiny bit. This is just an extra step. It's not included in the Flawless in Five, but it's something I will definitely um, add to your set, especially the brush too. And that will help just kind of give you a little bit more longevity. So you're not retouching throughout the day. I'm a very lazy makeup artist, so I hate bringing things with me as my day goes on. Um, so I'd like to secure my makeup throughout the day. So the mattifying powder is a great item to add to your set. Let's see if I'm going to ask your question. Would I use the brightening mist over the foundation? You can. The brightening mist is more to give you more of a refresher on your skin. So I actually recommend that before you apply your foundation, just to kind of give a little boost of hydration. If you feel like your foundation is a little too heavy, go ahead and spritz a little bit of that brightening mist. Let it settle in. You can take your retractable brush and kind of go over it a little bit just to kind of soften the color but it's not gonna necessarily set your foundation. It's more to hydrate. If you also feel like you have too much powder on, too much mattifying powder, too much bronzer, too much blush, if you spritz a little bit over, it kind of helps get rid of that like powdery, cakey look. So it will help eliminate that, but I wouldn't use it as to, to set your, your foundation. It's just more like rehydrating the skin, like a, like a drink of water for the skin, but not necessarily like um, to set. I wouldn't do that. Um, concealer, you can also use concealer too for um, spot coverage. I, my problem area is my cheeks. So I like to take a little bit right here. And that same brush that I use for the foundation, I like to just tap it in a little bit. And this helps give a little extra coverage. Um, a lot of people are scared to use concealer on the face because they're like, oh, that's more product. but Foundation just gives a very light layer. Concealer is meant to be a little bit more opaque. So you can use it on blemishes, you can use it under eyes, you can use it anywhere where you feel like foundation didn't give you as much coverage. Foundation, you just want to do a soft layer and then you will go ahead on top and do a little bit of concealer. Um, after you apply your concealer, you can do a little bit of mattifying powder and then you can move on to your um, blush. Blush, we have a few shades. Um, Blush is one of my favorite things. I feel like everyone needs a little bit of blush, especially after doing foundation. This is my favorite one. This is Dates. It's just like a soft terracotta kind of look. Um, and it gives a little bit more bronzy to, to the skin, like a little bit more like a sun-kissed look. Uh, the brush that I recommend for that is the angled brush, which is also great for highlighting too, because you can use the tip for highlight and just kind of go right above the cheekbones and you can do a little bit under eye too. But for this brush, how you apply, you will take your blush, hold it from the end, because you'll get a softer touch when you're applying your blush too. Tap twice, three times, and then tap off the excess. I'm gonna tap one more. And then you're gonna smile and apply right above that. And go a little bit into the hairline, but not all the way up. You're just gonna follow it right until where your brow is to give you a nice flush of color. If you feel like you applied too much blush, go back to your retractable brush and just kind of melt it in a little bit. This helps like soften it, melt it into the skin a little bit more. I'm going back to the brush, tapping off, smiling, and then going up to the hairline. You can also dab this on if you want it a little bit more intense, you would just take it and just kind of tap it in. Um, you will apply bronzer before the blush. Um, the Flawless and Fry does not come with a bronzer, but I love to do my step for complexion and cheeks is foundation, concealer, mattifying powder. Then you can do highlight over um, the high points of your area. Take your bronzer and then bronzer will go on the forehead, cheeks, and then you'll bring it down. Uh, bronzer is made for, to kind of bring back a little bit more color to the skin. So if you're doing bronzer all over, you're not giving any type of dimension to the skin. So the way the sun hits you, it usually hits you forehead, your cheeks, and then you can have a little bit around here. So you just want to apply it like if you're out in the sun. So right over here, 
over here bring down you can do a little bit on the sides of the nodes if you want to contour softly and then you would do your blush on top but definitely do blush um over bronzer it will look a little bit more natural i'm just gonna add a little bit more here Another lazy hack I have too is like whatever you have on your brush, just do a little bit on your eyes, just a tiny bit. I wouldn't do it for like raspberry, like that shade that's a little bit too intense, but just do a little bit. It gives a little bit of color. You can also do it with bronzer. With bronzer, it looks beautiful, really, really nice. Um, next up is one of my favorites is brows. So brows helps frame your face and it's the most important step in um, your makeup because it just kind of lifts everything up. It gives you more of a shape, it frames it up really nicely. Um, for the flawless and five, there's two options. Well, we have two brow options for um, brows and it's the brow gel. It comes in four different shades and also a clear. My shade is dark. I can kind of bounce between medium and dark. Um, medium is more ash. Dark is a little bit, um, has a little bit of red pigment inside, but slightly darker than, um, than the, uh, the medium. And then the brow pencil has two sides. So it has a little bully where you can brush your hairs and then your pencil on this side. When you're using your brow pencil, always make sure that you're sharpening it. You always wanna have a sharp point for it. Otherwise, um, it can get a little muddy and it would be a little too intense. I'm gonna do a little bit of both today. So I'm gonna brush my brows first. You wanna make sure you have all your hairs in place. Do it for both sides. And then to hold your pencil, right over here it says beauty counter. I like to hold it right underneath that B. And this helps kind of give you a little bit more flexibility to create more um, hair-like strokes on your brow. So starting from the bottom, you just wanna follow your brow. If you feel like you need to create a shape, start from the bottom, small little strokes. And if you feel like it's a little too, too sharp, just take your spoolie and soften it up. And it just kind of blends it a little bit more to the skin. I'm gonna do the same right over here, just a little bit. My problem area is in the front, so I need a little bit right here. I need a little help there. And then to top it off, I'm gonna do a little bit of the brow gel. Brow gel you can do by itself. It will definitely fill in for you. And like you can also do the pencil by itself too. If you want a little bit more of dimension and highlight, you can use both products. You can do, um, the brow pencil and then this on top. Also, it helps keep everything in place. So if you're using something like a brow pencil and you love the color, you can use the clear over it and it just kind of holds and conditions it. I'm gonna do a little bit of brow gel right here in the front. You can also go against your hairs too if you want it a little bit fuller, more volume. Right in the front. And then work my way back. Another trick too, you can also start from the middle, deposit most of your color there, and then come back to the front. So it's not so intense in the front. You have most of your color here, and then you can spread that color out throughout the brow. So it's always best to start right over here, come down to the tail, and then come back to the front. But this so, is super easy. Sorry, for, for those of you guys who might be interested in the brow gel. So yeah, Sarah, <laughs> it is a game changer. So uh, that's one of the newer products that came out, I believe last year. Um, mm -hmm. But prior to that, I was using Glossier Boy Brow. I, I don't know if you guys have heard of Glossier, which is, they have some wonderful things. But I was using Boy Brow, and then as soon as Beauty, Beauty Counter came out with theirs, um, I decided to try that. And the Beauty Counter one, I mean, people are obsessed with Boy Brow. The beauty counter one is even better, um, and I have tried both. So, <laughs> just just to to let you guys know, I've actually tried both too, and I agree. I the beauty counter one is much more conditioning compared to the glossy one. Mm -hmm. um, not to give them anything, but this one I feel like my hairs are a little bit softer, and they also I feel like they grow a little bit thicker too now. 
because it has conditioning, like it has carnauba wax inside, it has a little bit of um, jojoba, aloe inside. So that helps condition your raw hair. So of course, we'll use something with that. <laughs> Anything that's conditioning, I'm gonna go with. Um, so the next step is gloss. So you get to choose any gloss that you like. My favorite one is this one. This is Rosewood. It's one of our most popular shades. What I love about the gloss is that it's not sticky. It's super, super smooth, super hydrating too, but it also has like this bent wand, which works perfect because you can just apply it directly. And it's covering your entire lip without going outside the lines. Patricia, I, I don't know if you saw this one comment. Um, it says, if your brows are pretty light, should you just use clear? Uh, no, I would definitely use the light color in the brow gel because it will help enhance the hair. It will pick up the hair color without making it too, too dark. Um, there is a light brow pencil too, but um, the gel will actually work a lot better if your brows are a little bit lighter. Clear just kind of just, it's just clear, no color. It's just gonna condition. I recommend it more if you're trying to preserve your brow pencil color, or if you just want something to kind of keep your hairs in place, I would go with the clear. But um, definitely try the light, because it would definitely pick up the color, the hair color, um, and make it a little bit more pronounced, frame your face a little bit more. There's another one. Uh, should your brow color be lighter than your hair color? Not necessarily. Um, you want it to look as natural as possible. What I like to do is just kind of either look at your roots. If your roots are darker and you have lighter hair, try to match something that's a little bit more ashier to your tone. Um, if you're blonde, definitely use light. If you're kind of in between, like a little bit more like a light brown, um, you can do anywhere between a medium and a dark. It's just more depending on your hair color, your skin tone too, and um, your brow color too. If your brows are a little bit lighter, like I said, uh, go ahead and try the light because it's more taupe and it would look a little bit more natural, it's more ash. But it shouldn't be lighter. You just want to get it as close as possible to your actual brow color. Um, so like I said, going back to lip gloss, this is my favorite one. Um, it's a universally flattering shade. Another shade I would do too, that's like, if you're kind of trying to decide, I don't know what shade I need. This is one, Azalea is really pretty. It's soft pink. It goes well with everyone. Um, it's almost like a, like a springtime pink. It's super, super nice. And then if you're looking for like a fall shade, Fig is also really pretty. It just gives like a little soft plum on the lip. But I would definitely look into those top three shades. Um, there's also one called Poppy, which was my favorite, but unfortunately it got discontinued. It was a soft like red with a little bit of shimmer. But that's also one of my favorites. If you find that one, I would definitely grab it. Um, Peony is really pretty too. Um, it's also a softer one. Azalea is a little bit more hot pink, I'm sorry. But Peony is also really pretty too. And then final step for um, Flawless and Five is the volumizing mascara. There's two mascaras that you can choose. Um, there's, light, there's lengthening and then there's volumizing. Volumizing is my favorite one because it has more of an hourglass shaped brush where you're able to kind of volumize and pick up your lashes a little bit more and give them more dramatics. The lengthening one is just a straightforward um, type of brush which is great to pick up your hairs a little bit more and define them. And it also helps kind of lengthen them a little bit more. But this one does a little bit of everything. My way of using it is working in sections. Um, clean mascaras are a little bit harder to kind of fall in love with because you're used to the ones that have the bad chemicals, that have the carbon inside, and those are a little bit more effective. But with clean mascaras, you just have to work with it a little bit more, give it a little extra love in the day. So what I like to do is just work in sections. So I look down, I take my brush to the root, and then I wiggle it through my lashes. So I'm just using the front of this brush right here, just this tip right here, and I'm just picking it up. And then I'm going to the middle, same effect. And you start seeing a little, and just kind of lifting it up a bit. Same thing. The trick is to wiggle 
your mascara wand just so you could cover all your lash hairs. Same thing at the end. And then when I feel like I got through all my lashes, I just take the entire wand and go through. So if you're used to more like a, a regular mascara um, and then you switch to beauty counter, you may, like Patricia was saying, like it, it it's a little bit different. Um, it's not as, I guess, viscous. Um, yeah. And so what a lot of people do is in order to help kind of warm it up before putting it on, people will like put it in their pocket while they're doing everything else, just warm it up. Or you could, some, I've heard some people will run it under warm water a little bit. I don't do that just because I always live in a hot place. Um, but I, I do know that, that uh, those are two little tricks that some people do. Yeah, what I also do is like I take it and I just kind of rub it between my fingers, my hands, and it just kind of warms it up a little bit. Um, I know a lot of people that run it under hot water or they have like a cup and they just place it in there with like a little bit of warm water inside. But if you just rub it in between your palms, it should warm up enough where it will be fluid enough. Another thing too is when you're taking your mascara out of the tube, you want to make sure you're taking it out straight. No pumping of air. It helps um, when you're pumping air into the mascara, you're pumping in bacteria and air and it dries it out faster. Mascara should last you about 45 to 90 days um, if you're using it correctly. So what you wanna do to remove your mascara, you wanna take it, swirl it around and then pull. And you'll see you'll get enough um, mascara because the wiper system will wipe off any excess, but you'll have enough on your actual um, your wand. So starting again, I'm taking the tip and I'm just wiggling it through. And I'm using the tip of the brush again. And if I feel like I have enough, I just take my wand and go through. And I necessarily don't say like do one or two coats. Do as many coats as you feel like you need possible. When you're wiggling and vibrating that wand through your brush, you shouldn't have any type of clumps inside. Wiggling it and vibrating it helps remove that and just kind of gives you more of a defined um, lash. And you want to do that with any um, mascara. You want to wiggle it through your actual, your lashes. For the bottom, necessarily don't have to do a little bit of mas um, mascara underneath, but I do. I like to take the tip of it and just grab a little bit to find the little hairs underneath. And this helps grab it a little bit more. And that's it. That's your whole flawless in five. So it's Either the foundation, you can take, you can use either um, tin skin or the dew skin. Remember, tin skin is more of your opaque foundation. You will get more coverage and it's more like sheer medium to a full coverage, depending on how much you use, depending on how much you add as you go. Um, my tip is to warm it up on your hands first and definitely use a retractable brush because it will give, it will deliver the most natural finish. You can also use a sponge, you can use your hands. Um, if you're using your hands, please make sure they're sanitized and clean. Um, your hands tend to have oils in them too, and little germs too. So you wanna make sure you're using a clean hand. Um, for applying with hands, you wanna tap first. No rubbing, tap. Tap it in, because it helps give you a little bit more coverage. Um, when you're rubbing it, you're just kind of moving that foundation around. So it's not giving you enough coverage. Everything ends up on your hands and you just have a little bit on your face. If you're using a sponge, something like this, make sure it's clean, make sure it's wet, squeeze out any excess water, and then you're gonna bounce this beauty blender or your, whatever sponge you're using, you wanna bounce it on top. And this would ensure that you're giving your skin extra coverage. But one thing I would definitely use is this. This is something I would add, because you can travel with it, it remains closed. Um, someone asked a question, let's see. 
Would you recommend applying a cream blush bronzer? For sure. Um, I love bronzers. Like I said earlier, bronzers I like to apply um, before um, my blush. I like to do it after highlighter. So what I do is like, I do all my complexion products, my foundation, my concealer, set it with a little bit of mattifying powder, take your highlighter right on top, do your bronzer, and then do your... Um, your blush. If you're using a cream blush, you actually want to do the opposite. You want to do your bronzer and then you can do your um, cream blush on top or you can do it underneath depending on which color you're using. If you're using hibiscus, definitely do your um, blush first and then do your bronzer on top and it looks a little bit, it looks like a kind of like an ombre on the cheek and it helps kind of set that um, blush a little bit too. But yeah, you can definitely do a cream blush with this combo too. It's all preference, whatever you feel like is easier to use. I prefer powders. They just last a little bit longer. In the summertime, sometimes I do a little bit of that cream blush with the dew skin, but whatever you feel like your skin needs and what you're attracted to, for sure you can definitely do a cream blush with that. Um, you also get like the concealer. Concealer has a little bit of knock grass, so it's great for underneath the eyes. It helps um, give a little bit more firmness, hydrate too. You can use it on blemishes, don't forget. You can also use this to highlight too. So if you take a shade that's slightly lighter than your concealer, you could do a little bit underneath the brow bone. You could do some like right on the bridge of the nose and it just kind of brightens. You can also do a little bit here too. And it just kind of brightens up the eyes, the face a little bit more. Um, you have your brows, the brow gel, brow pencil. Pencil is great if you need to create a shape. The gel is great for just overall filling in more volume, giving a little bit of dimension to your brows. You can either use them separately and you can use them together. There's no right or wrong way. Um, what's easiest is the brow gel because you just want to kind of comb it through and you're done. Um, the pencil, you need a little bit of work. You want to make sure you're holding it correctly. You always want to make sure it's sharpened too. And then you have that little spoolie to kind of blend in a little bit more. Uh, and then you have gloss too, and blushes. Blushes I love. I think I own pretty much all of every shade possible. I like to blend them too. Uh, recommendations I could make. Nectar is beautiful. It works with every skin tone. It has a little bit of shimmer inside. If you've ever used NARS Orgasm, it's similar to that. So if NARS Orgasm is your jam and you want to switch over to a clean brand, Nectar is your color. It's also great in summertime too, and it works really nice over bronzer. Um, date is another one that I love. I feel like it's a color that's forgotten all the time. It's a soft terracotta. It's pretty much like um, blush and bronzer together. So it just creates like a very nice sun-kissed look. And then in the final, my favorite is melon because it's, it's a soft peach. And if you just apply right to the cheeks, it just gives like a really natural flush. Uh, I would say more melon, like fair to medium tones can use that color because it's pretty light. Same with guava. Guava is like a soft pink. So if you're more on the lighter side to like maybe a sand, you can do either um, guava or a melon. And then mascara. Mascara, my baby is this one, the volumizing. Um, don't get intimidated by the brush. A lot of people are like, ah, that brush is too big. This is a great one. It just kind of lifts everything up, gives, delivers more of a voluminous lash without um, using too many products. You really don't have to use like a, uh, what do you call it, uh, eye color for this one either. Um, there's a few questions too. Is there an orgasm shade dupe that leans close? Yeah, the nectar leans closer to your orgasm. And then with summer approaching by normal colors, um, it depends on your foundation. Uh, I always tell people to wait until you get a little bit of a tan to purchase a darker shade because it depends. You can get a little bit darker as the summer goes on and then that shade you bought in May necessarily won't work for, that darker shade that you bought in May won't work for July. So I just wait until um, you get a little bit of color. But yeah. yeah. And, and going off of that, if you use the tint skin or sorry, do skin, that's the tinted moisturizer. They are a lot more forgiving. So they, they, mm -hmm. once you start putting it on it, they can go towards a pretty wide range of 
colors. So like for me, we, I, I got shade three, number three, when we were living in Hawaii, that was just the very first, the, actually Dew Skin was my very first beauty toner product. It was like my gateway drug. <laughs> um, and so I was using shade three and then um, a couple months later, there was a deal on Flawless and Five where if you bought Flawless and Five, you could get the retractable brush for free. And I knew I'd run out of Dew Skin eventually, so I decided to try shade number two. Turns out that one works as well. Um, I wear three when I'm a little bit darker, but but two, but they're just they're If you want something that's a little more forgiving, easier to choose online, um, then do skin is is you don't have to get it as quite spot on as you do um with tint skin and um one thing to mention that that i love about beauty counter especially since most of us don't live near one of the retail stores is that beauty counter has a 60-day return policy so if you don't like anything if it doesn't work like there's no it can be for whatever reason you can easily generate a return slip and then just pop it in the mail for free. So um, that, that, you know, it kind of makes you nervous sometimes buying makeup online, especially when you're choosing colors. Um, but just know that, that you have 60 days to try something. And if it doesn't, doesn't work out, then you can send it back. Also, another trick too, is if you have two different dew skin shades and you have a lighter and a deeper, Use the deeper one as a bronzer. Just take a little bit and just tap it onto your cheeks. And it kind of works like a very soft, natural bronzer without using a powder. Still delivers that dewiness on the skin. So like if you have number two and then three is your color for the summer time, just take a little bit of that three around your face and just use it as a light bronzer. Don't let it go to waste because there's sunscreen inside there, so it'll expire. So just use it up as a bronzer. That's another tip you can use. I know my internet is a little fish, so I don't know if I'm still on. Yeah, you're still on. <laughs> um, okay, well, if, I don't know if you guys have any other questions. Feel free to, to pop them in there. Um, also, also, I am always, like, I get messages all the time about helping you choose colors. And there, there are actually some charts that are available for consultants to see um, that make it, that are a little bit more, um, make help they make choosing a color a little bit more clear than what you can see on the website so if you're wondering like I can pull a different chart and I can always send that to you I'm always I'm always ha happy to help um when it comes to choosing shades just because I know how you know kind of nerve-wracking it is doing it online um so yeah <laughs> yeah and if you have any questions um I can share my email too um, I'm part of the New York store on Prince Street, so you can, guys can always call us and we can help you out over the phone too. We can help you virtually too. Um, our email, if you want like any like one-on-one -on -one, um, consultations right now, it's princestreet at beautycounter.com and we will connect you with someone and we can just kind of go through um, anything, whether it's skincare, makeup, um, body care, hair care. Um, we're here, you're whenever you need us. That's great to know. Well, thank you so much, Patricia. This was this was fantastic. Do you would you mind sharing what your um, your skincare routine is? You have such beautiful skin, so I'm just wondering what what your, your routine is. So right now, I'm kind of in between counter time and counter match. It's so the weather here in New York is a little off. Like one day it's like 80 degrees or 60, and then it goes down to like 20. Um, so I'm kind of going back and forth. Uh, so what I, my routine kind of looks like is I, I cleanse with the foaming cleanser from um, Counter Match day and night, and then I use the toner. And the toner I actually have here because I use it all day. This is my favorite. This is the Counter Match toner. I just kind of pump it to my hands and then apply it to my skin. Uh, there's a lot of hyaluronic acid inside here, and my skin is kind of like combination. So this is great to kind of help balance it out. Still deliver um, a lot of hydration, help boost up my hydration, but the areas that I'm a little bit oily, oily this helps kind of balance out too. Um, so you can use this day and night also. And right now I'm going back and forth between our new um, 
vitamin C serum and our intense moisture serum. Um, I kind of use them together. So I do the intense moisture serum first, let that absorb, and then I do the vitamin C on top. And then for moisturizer, I use the soft cream from Counter Time. It's just super hydrating. Counter Time is our anti-aging line that's a retinol alternative. So we call it retinol natural because it has bokuchi oil. It also has Swiss Alpine Rose inside. And together they mimic what retinol will do to your skin without using retinol. So it helps rejuvenate your pores, your texture of your skin. It helps out with um, hydration for sure. It helps boost hydration up too. Um, it's a line I recommend anybody to use. Um, I wouldn't, age range wise, I would kind of keep it from 20 and above. If you're not looking for something for anti-aging, I still recommend it because it's super hydrating. Um, but those are my two favorite lines right now. And then I do overnight peel once a week at least. <laughs> That's the best. That was my very, that was my second purchase. And I always talk about it on Instagram because it is just, it is a game changer. It's like you put it on once and then you wake up and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't look exhausted. Yeah. My first purchase was um, the sunscreen. And then second purchase, I got the overnight peel. As soon as I got home, I washed my face. I did the peel. Next day I woke up, I was like, oh my God, you will see such a big difference just by one use. Like, it just transforms your skin. Um, the difference between the vitamin C and the brightening oil, the vitamin C is more of a treatment. So if you're looking for intense brightness, if your skin is dull, if you have any um, dark spots, that's going to help treat that. And then your vitamin C oil just helps kind of lock in moisture, still brightening, still kind of delivering more of a glowy skin, but the vitamin C is just going to help treat um, under, like, the... The pigmentation, texture, dullness, um, overall brightness. The oil is just like supplement. So it helps kind of lock in your hydration after you apply your moisturizer and still deliver a little bit of brightness. So if you're looking for something that's a little bit more intense in the oil, definitely look into the vitamin C. Yeah, the vitamin C is also designed to protect your skin mm -hmm. from getting new ones. Um, that, that's what I've, I've read. Yeah. So it helps protect your skin from free radicals too. So anything outside like pollution, um, your environment, it helps protect your skin. So it kind of creates a barrier around your skin where it helps kind of like bounce those off. So it's just fighting it throughout the day. And then we, sorry, uh, Emilia has one question. Uh, I always think of an oil as a final stage to lock it all in, is that right? Yeah, that's, that's exactly what it is. So you would do, um, if you're using an oil, what I recommend is to cleanse. You either essence or tone, um, serum, moisturizer, your eye cream, and then oil should be your final step because it's just locking it in. And when you're applying your oil, you want to take it, rub it into your palms, and then just press it into the skin. A lot of people just kind of rub it in and it's just sitting on top and you have like that greasiness that slickness to the skin, you want your skin to absorb it. So you want to press it into the skin as opposed to rubbing it. You can also mix it with your moisturizer if you feel like you need a little bit of a boost, but I highly recommend to use it as your final step over your moisturizer. Great, thank you for sharing that. And uh, just for all of y'all, I'm not sure, I'm not sure who's, have, have any of you guys purchased before or are you, I know Sarah has and Hillary. Um, anyway, so right now, if you're a new client, uh, Beauty Counter, just through the end of the month, and I've, I've mentioned it on stories today, but it's just such a good deal because the, the consultant discount is 25%. Right now, they're offering for new, client, or new customers um, a 20% discount. So if you've never shopped before, um, if you just go onto the website and then there's a banner up at the top, you can click that and then put in your email address and then they will email you a code. Um, and then you can go to my site, um, which is just beautycounter.com and then slash Katie Vale. Um, so that's a fantastic discount that, and that's, uh, you can use that on flawless and five, which mm -hmm. normally flawless and five and the entire skincare lines are exempt from uh, the discounts like this, but they, you can, you can use it on those. It doesn't work on that new vitamin C serum. 
or uh, the new counter start line, which is kind of the, an alternative. Like if you've been using Cetaphil um, or something, you, if you're kind of a minimalist and you're interested in just, you know, trying clean, um, that's a great kind of stepping stone for you. Um, and then there's also the new foaming face wash, the counter match one, which I haven't tried yet, but I've heard it's, heard it's great. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> that will probably be a next, a next purchase for me. So there, I just wanted to cover that. Um, also, I don't know if you all, any of you guys are Band of Beauty. I know some of you are. Um, Band of Beauty is basically Beauty Counters membership program. So one thing that I really appreciate is that it doesn't have those like auto ship things that some other companies do. Um, so you're not automatically charged when you don't need something. Um, it's just the membership program. So it costs $29 to sign up. And what it gets you is 10% off or 10% credit every time you shop. So say, um, like if you make this first purchase, when you sign up, if you've bought a hundred dollars worth of, of product, $10 would be applied or you could apply it to your next purchase. Um, so that would take $10 off and then it carries and the membership is good for a year. When you sign up another perk of, of this membership program is as long as you're also spending 50 on product, you will get a free gift. And the gift right now is the overnight resurfacing peel. It's a travel size, but it's still pretty sizable. It's like a three quarter size um, or two thirds size, um, which is normally $42 on its own. So you're essentially getting that um, for at a discounted price. And then you also get free shipping on orders over a hundred. And so shipping is always either like $6.95 or $12.95, depending on how much you buy. So that right there saves you a good bit of money um, also. So I wanted to cover that. And then if anyone right now, I know this is such an uncertain time. And um, if you happen to be like, I, I was very hesitant, truthfully, when I first signed up to be a consultant, I, um, my mentor, Anna, who I'm using her account right now, um, she had approached me a couple times and I'm like, no, 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 that's not my thing. But I am incredibly thankful that she persisted because it has been the biggest blessing to our family. And it's been a, you know, a great thing for me to be able to do while staying at home and taking care of the kids. Um, but I'm still contributing to the family. So if anyone is in the position where you need or you know, want to have your own little thing. Um, if if you're not working outside the home, or if you are, um, they they are offering a, a really good dis a deal right now, where it's normally ninety eight dollars to join um, as a consultant. Right now, that's waived, and um, you can get the sample kit. And so normally, the 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 starter kits are pretty pricey. It's a bunch of product, and it's and it's discounted. But in order to like facilitate sharing clean beauty during this time when we're not supposed to be socializing, they the starter kit is all just like little samples. So you can tear them off, pop them in the mail. And so that um, the hundred or the, the $98 enrollment fee is waived. And then to get all those samples, like of all the key products is a hundred dollars so if you if you happen to be interested i'm always here to to talk about um about that yeah there's two two members on my team jen and carmen um are on this call and so i appreciate you guys <laughs> uh joining so anyway i'm always open for questions and i just i i share this because i really like it and i have been so happy with how it's all helped me and taken the guesswork out of everything. So I hope this was, was beneficial. And I, I am just really thankful that you guys decided to, to join me and take an hour of your time to, to do this. And thank you so much, for, Patricia, for, for teaching us. I jotted down some notes that I will be incorporating. It'll probably make my routine take a little bit longer, but my makeup will probably look a little bit better too. So, <laughs> so I'm excited to, to use your tips. So. All right. Well, thank you guys. Thank you, Patricia. <laughs> thank you, everyone. You're welcome. Bye. Take care, guys. <laughs>